Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للصلاة هيا على الفلاح هيا على الفلاح Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد أبي ويتنس that there is no God but Allah and I openly bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last prophet Khotuna being the seal of all the prophets dear believers Muslims brothers, sisters, I guess those who are in attendance here for the first time at Masjid Asabu Yami, our audience online, Facebook, Instagram, whoever's streaming, I greet you with the greeting of peace. The greeting in a beautiful Arabic language through which Quran Al Quran was revealed, a protected language, a language that we know can't be corrupted. I greet you in this Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We thank Allah for this wonderful day of Yom Juma'ah, this day of gathering, this day of worshiping Allah, Allah alone who has no partners, la sharika la. And we thank Allah, we truly are blessed to be here to witness another Yom Jum'ah, Ameen. Allah reminds us in Quran, in Surah Jum'ah, in Surah 62, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, when the call to prayer is proclaimed on Friday, the day of assembly, this day of gathering, hasten earnestly to the remembrance of Allah and leave off business and traffic and trade is best for you if you but knew. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. O you who believe, Allah is talking to the believer. Not the Muslim, but the one who believes. The Quran is for all people. As the next ayat, and when the prayer is finished, then you may disperse through the earth or the land and seek the bounties of Allah and celebrate the praise of Allah often without hesitation 
that you may prosper. And Allah say, and when the prayer is complete, we should go out and disperse through the land. And Allah reminds us in Quran, and don't neglect your share of this life. And it's a wonderful command, not an option, but after we pray, we should go get our halal earnings. There's no options. This is what it is. So we're not to be praying all day. We have to go out and provide for our families because if we have strong families, alhamdulillah, we have a strong community. In Surah al Ma'ida, as it's translated, this table spread. Ma'ida, this Eid, another gathering, again, this coming together. On this day, the rejected one have given up all hope of your religion. Yet fear them not, fear me. On this day, I have perfected for you your religion, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Al-Islam as your way of life. So as we reminded in Quran that shaitan in his isms will do everything that he can to try to distract you and making you forget that you have the best religion in the world. And alhamdulillah, this perfect and beautiful religion that we are grateful to call al-Islam proper. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Our topic for today, dear believers, brothers and sisters, the doorsteps of Ramadan. Inshallah ta'ala, we are approximately dependent on the Hilal, we know, but through our scientific methods, alhamdulillah, we're looking like we're 54 days away from our beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. But before we get to our beautiful month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we can get ready to receive the benefits, mercies, and the blessings of the month of Rajab. And we know what the month of Rajab is one of the four sacred months. And we are reminded in Quran in Surah Tawbah and Surah Nine, Ayat 36, in the number of months on which Allah, in the number of months in sight of Allah is 12 in a year. So ordained by Allah him the day he created the heavens and the earth. Of them four are sacreds, the one that we just mentioned, Rajab, Muharram, Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Hadda. And so don't wrong yourselves in these sacred months. And we should know that the month of Rajab is known as the month of Tawbah, the month of repentance. So we just finished reading in Surah to 9 which is Surah to Tawbah, the only Surah in Quran that doesn't start with Bismillah rahman rahim but yet it goes in the context why Allah is the most merciful, why he's the beneficent, and why he's the redeemer. So it goes into its context. As the understanding of Rajab, we know that it's the month of repentance. It's also the month of istighfar, meaning that we're seeking his forgiveness. And as it's been narrated, seek much forgiveness from Allah in Rajab because in every hour of the month, Allah frees the people from the hellfire. The mercies and the benefits in the month of Rajab. Fighting, as we know, is forbidding during these months. Forbidding in the month of Rajab. So the brother and your sister who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah is not your enemy. But well, understand that that brother and that sister is Allah's creation. So we should stop fighting each other and loving each other just a little bit more. Stop judging each other, but loving each other just a little bit more. Instead of judging each other and talking about each other, let's inspire each other to be closer to one another and be closer to Almighty God, Allah. And we show them through our righteous actions. Why do we want to earn Allah's displeasure? We don't want to earn Allah's displeasure for nothing and no one. We want to keep the peace because we know Almighty God Allah loves us and we love him, period. So we observe this wonderful month of istighfar and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he referred to this month as the month of divine mercy, that we seek more mercy and forgiveness in this month. 
And anyone who prays with a complete loving and caring heart in this month, he or she should be pardoned. So we have benefits before we even get to the month of Ramadan. We have benefits before we even get into the month of Sha'aban when we can obtain some of these benefits right now before we're 54 days away from our beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. It's so beautiful, dear believers, that Allah didn't create the human being to go to hell. He didn't create us to go to hell, dear believers. So we should stop allowing people and the shaitan and his isms to drag us to hell when we know that Allah created the human being the best. Why do I say Allah created the human being the best? You are the best brought out, evolved for mankind. Allah told us this in Quran. So why are we letting this brother or this sister or anything that's deviating us to go into the hellfire when Allah already told us that we are the best of people? I'm so convinced that Allah loved the human being so much. Can't nobody distract me from pleasing Almighty God Allah. They whisper and they try. But we're reminded through these wonderful mercies and the benefits when we have our beautiful religion of Al-Islam proper. So I'm grateful to Allah for Al-Islam and I'm grateful to be a Muslim. And so I encourage us to continue to keep saying that I love being a Muslim and that we show the example for our friends who Iman is not all the way that strong, but also for the ones that's not Muslim while we are example for humanity. I have created you the best of people evolved for mankind. And not only are you the best of people, Allah made you winners as well too. you winners. You are the best of people, a beautiful people. You're not created to go to hell. Allah trusted what he created in me and you, dear believers. Allah trusted what he created in me and you, but also gave you more um on it. And said that you are a winner. The believers are winners. That you are winners, dear believers. You are the best of people. You are beautiful of people. And you are winners. When I read this and when I go over this in Quran, these wonderful ayahs in Quran, wallahi, I feel so good. Because there's nothing like reading the words of Allah, inspiring you, encouraging you to be a better human being. I'm so grateful to Allah for Islam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And what else do we know about this month of Rajab? Again, dear believers, those who are just joining us here at the Masjid and online, our topic for today is the doorsteps of Ramadan, but enjoying the benefits and the mercies of this beautiful month of Rajab before we get to Ramadan. And we didn't even touch Sha'aban yet. We didn't even get into Ramadan yet. We didn't even get into Shawal yet. We're just enjoying these beautiful and wonderful mercies of the month of Rajab. What else do we know about this month of Rajab, dear believers? The sacred month, as we know, the pilgrims was allowed to travel through the land, through the Holy Land, to make the pilgrimage. It took them really almost 20 days to almost 30 days to travel at that time. Right now, we go to Saudi Arabia. We travel from Mecca to Medina. A bus, it takes maybe a little over four hours. But alhamdulillah, right now they have a bullet train to get us there in two hours. But look at the mercy of Almighty God Allah allowing this to happen. But during those times, it took them really 20 to almost 30 days just to travel through the land, but it was no fighting so they can offer their pilgrimage in peace. These are the things that we should know about the month of Rajab. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Rajab, is the month of Allah. Sha'aban is my month. And Ramadan is for my ummah. Rajab is the month of Allah. And Sha'aban is my month. And Ramadan is the month of my ummah. May Allah allow us to reach Ramadan for that we say, I mean. As it's narrated, the month of Rajab is the month of planting your seeds. Sha'aban is the month of watering them, and Ramadan is the month of harvesting them. So just think, dear believers, we mentioned 54 days away. 
we are increasing our worship. We're reading more Quran, more Ibadah. We're doing everything that we can. So when Ramadan come in, I'm not saying that Ramadan won't be difficult for us, but it's preparing us for those long canutes that Imam Aziz is going to do in Ramadan. And we know how that is. So we thank Allah very much for allowing us those preps to get into Ramadan. We thank Allah for it. And the gifts of the five daily salats, the gift of the five prayers that we can make, alhamdulillah, the masjid is open for five daily prayers, dear believers, that we can come and worship our creator during these times. During these times right now, they say COVID is over, COVID is not over, but look at the masjid right now, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, it's full, almost full to capacity. In the last two ayats of Surah Al-Baqarah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever recites the last two verses in Baqarah in the night, it will suffice him. So we should get familiar with Baqarah 285 and 286. And dear believers, remember, your covenant with your creator is special and is beautiful. That bond that you have with Almighty God Allah is special and is beautiful. And don't let nobody break that bond that you have with your creator. And do whatever you have to do in the eyesights of Allah to protect that peace. Do whatever you have to do, dear believers, to protect that peace as you're getting closer to Almighty God, Allah. So what should we be doing as we're leading up to these beautiful doorsteps of Ramadan? Self-reflect and purify the intentions, your intentions. Spend some time alone, dear believers, with yourself and reflect how can you improve your spirituality. Ask yourselves a question, dear believers. A few questions, I should say. Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with me if I die today? I reflected on it as I was driving in from work. Would Allah be pleased with you if you was called back today? How can I be prove, how can I prove to be a better Muslim? Are my words, are my actions, are they sincere when I'm dealing with our brother or our sister or with our family? But one that stuck out to me, dear believers, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with me if I died today? It stuck with me and it stuck with me for a nice little while. We just had Janaza. I have a Janaza tomorrow. Janaza two weeks ago. And I just start to reflect. They can't make dua no more. So I told myself every single day we're going to try to get better and better to be pleasing to Almighty God Allah. We're not perfect, no. But attempts to get better, yes. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, it's not off the short dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they believe us our topic for today is the doorsteps of Ramadan or Ramadan enjoying the benefits of the month of Rajab and the month of Sha'aban and the months coming leading up to our beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. And what else happened in this beautiful and sacred month as we leading up to our beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan? We know the parents of Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were married during this sacred month of Rajab. Amina, his mother, became pregnant with the best of creation, Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know in this wonderful month, Alhamdulillah, the miraculous night journey happened in this month. The Isra wa Miraj took place on the 27th of Rajab. So all of these things happen and these wonderful blessings happen in Rajab where we can benefit from as we go back and we read the seerah 
and we're doing all of this ibadah and worship in this beautiful month, dear believers, it just increases us in our wealth of knowledge. So rightfully so, the Muslims increase their good deeds in the month of Ramadan. Yes, we know we come to the masjid, we pack the masjid, but we can do more in this month right now, dear believers, if we remember that the deeds weigh more on the scales in the sacred months. So whatever good deeds that we're doing right now, dear believers, brothers and sisters, increase it more and do more and continue to keep doing more. And this is an excellent opportunity, dear believers, to increase ourselves for our akhirah, for the next life. That we're doing more good deeds and more good deeds and it's an investment in securing our spot in the akhirah. And I don't think any, anything is more beautiful when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers your du'as despite our sins. May Allah continue to have mercy upon us and for that we say ameen. Wallahi, dear believers, you will see the doors open more and more when you sacrifice something for Allah. When you sacrifice something for Almighty God, Allah, the doors will open wide open for you, but we just have to do it. We just have to do it, and we have to believe that Allah will take care of us no matter what's going on in our life. Read the Quran, get familiar with your book, and get encouraged through the words of Almighty God, Allah. And Allah reminds us in Surah 59, 19, and do, and do not be like those who forget Allah, so he made them forget themselves. And do not be like those who forget Allah, so he made them forget themselves. Don't turn your back on the one who gave you life. It just don't make sense that Allah woke you up this morning. Whether you had the alarm clock or however you got up, right? Allah got you up. Don't turn your back on Allah for just a quick amusement or whatever it is that's distracting you. Allah got you, but we have to believe in our creator. And remember, Allah doesn't make mistakes in his plan. There are valuable lessons in everything that happens to you, brothers and sisters. Remember that Allah made you honorable. All you beautiful people, brothers and sisters, Adam. Adam, all the children of Adam are honorable. I'm looking at honorable people that Allah gave another chance to today. And he woke us up. And he didn't charge you for it, but you hear. So may Allah continue to bless our wonderful community and be patient for paradise, dear believers. And stop running away from what you pray for. Stop running away from what you pray for and be patient for paradise. You ask for paradise and Allah put the condition in there and we're running from it. Don't run from it. You pray for Allah put the condition in there, but now it's time to work for your paradise and just know that paradise takes work. Paradise takes work. And just remember that the disbelievers plan. But Allah too planned, and Allah is the blessed of planners, of planners. And Allah won't fail you, dear believers. I'm encouraging us to tell you, I'm encouraging you, and I'm telling you that Allah won't fail you. He won't fail you. I don't care what's going on in your life, dear believers. Allah won't fail you. You're going through some hardship right now, but yet you're being obedient to the call. You come into success and you come into worship. You come into cultivate and Allah got you here, but you're going through something. But Allah didn't give up on you. If something is destined for you, rest assured, it will never go to nobody else. Trust Allah and be patient. But more importantly, but less important, but important, trust Allah like you trust your GPS. Because if it was a detour coming over here, I was going to put it in the GPS, wallahi. But trust Allah like you trust your GPS. The GPS give you right turn, left turn, detour here, detour there. But you got here. But we know it's the color of Allah at the end of the day. So oh Allah, please remove the laziness when it comes to worshiping you. And for that, we say, I mean, oh Allah, please remove the laziness when it comes to worshiping you. And for that, we say, I mean. And stop 
put in your seeds, this is for the brothers and the sisters, including myself. I'm talking to myself first. And stop putting your seeds, your blessings, in other people's garden who have no intentions on watering them. I want to say it again so it can resonate with us, dear believers. Stop putting your seeds in other people's gardens who have no intentions on watering them. And I pause for a moment because I wanted to seek in, dear, uh, dear believers. Allah blessed you with goodness, but I'm encouraging you, dear believers, to be around people who love you and remove yourselves from people who is discouraging you and pulling you away from this wonderful deen, this wonderful religion of Al-Islam. It might hurt with the separation, but Allah got you. Allah got you. Stop putting your seeds and your blessings in other people's gardens who have no intentions on watering them at all, dear believers. I'm telling you, because they only trying to wipe out Islam with what they got going on and what they got going on is not important. So your competition isn't other people. Your competition is your procrastination. Your competition is your ego. Your competition is the unhealthy food that you're consuming. Your competition is the knowledge that you neglect to learn. The negative behavior that you're nurturing and your lack of creativity. Compete against that because your brother and your sister who say la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah is not your enemy. Your brother and your sister who say la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah is not your enemy. Your competition isn't to other people. Your competition is your procrastination and your ego that we should check at the door and the unhealthy food that we consume in when we go to the restaurant or even at home. Your competition is the knowledge that you neglect from the lack of study that you're not doing. And the behavior that you're nurturing. And that creativity, don't you understand? When you have a clear mind that you create something and Allah gave you that idea, dear believers. So we have to clear our mind. But just remember the brother and your sister who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, they not your enemy, that's your brother. And that's your sister. So when shaitan can't make you commit sins, he makes you waste your time. When shaitan and his isms and his helpers, and the shaitan of teens, he makes you waste your time. What a lowly thing to do that you got 24 hours a day and you wasted three quarters of it. Don't let Satan come in between the time that you could be getting closer to your Lord and also providing for your family. If Shaitan defeated you yesterday, dear believers, we will defeat him today with repentance and good deeds. Always seeking forgiveness, but following up with good deeds as we continue to move closer with our creator. And for the individual, cutting ties with people who consistently hurt you. It isn't enough. That brother wronged you or that brother, she hurt you. That brother hurt you and that, that brother and that sister hurt you. Everybody hurt you. So you cut ties with that person. It's good, but it's not enough. It's imperative dear believers, that you cut ties with the version of yourself who allowed that pain to cause you for that long of a time. So yes, we cut off individuals who harmed us and hurt us and didn't have good intentions, but we have to have the responsibility as well for us, dear believers, and we have to help ourselves 
heal ourselves to continue to be the best version of ourselves because we had to play a part in it as well, too. So it starts and it ends with you, dear believers. So until you change your thinking, you will forever recycle the same experience that you're dealing with on a daily basis. Until you change your thinking and your changed behavior, dear believers, you will forever recycle the same experience and the same problems that you're dealing with right now to this day, dear believers. And don't stop praying. Whatever you do, dear believers, I know it's hard. Our workplace, our family is a test on us. Our workplace is a test on us. I know it, dear believers. But don't stop praying because you might be in the middle of what you prayed for. Don't stop praying. Wallahi, my day yesterday was, it was a challenge. But I knew I had to come and deliver the cook bar tomorrow because if I didn't, I don't want to mess the opportunity. But alhamdulillah, we're here. By Allah's permission, his grace and his mercy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease us from the burden that we're going through and that nobody don't know about. And for that, we say, I mean, I know we all going through stuff, but may Allah ease that burden for us. May Allah allow us to receive the mercies and the benefits in the month of Rajab. May he allow us to receive the benefits and the mercy of Sha'abed. May Allah allow us to reach the beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. And after Ramadan, Shawal, and for that we say, I mean, in Dhul Hijjah and in Muharram. And remember, dear believers, as I conclude, remember your prayers don't expire. So if you're making dua and you're praying for something today and you don't get it, when you want to get it, you offer the dua. Uh, your prayers don't expire. There's no expiration date on your dua. But what's needed is consistency of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what's needed, dear believers. So I pray to Allah, dear believers, that Allah continue to evolve our community and that we continue to work together and that we are that wonderful ummah that Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he prayed for. And when I'm looking at a beautiful and honorable community, Allah, Allah is allowing this to happen. And can't nobody do nothing about it. Nobody could do anything about it. This wonderful ummah, striving hard to please almighty God, Allah. Shaitan can't do nothing with us, dear believers. Even if he wanted to, he can't. He can wasui sufi sadorinaz. He can whisper. And what he can do after that, he can withdraw after the whisper. And we know that he withdraws after the whisper. But it's something about that human being that Allah created that's honorable, that he can't come in between our wonderful iman that's so strong. And why is it important when we hear that Adhan being called that Satan don't come nowhere near the house of worship? from each salat to salat. And then on top of that, we making qiyam or lay in the middle of the night. And we getting up for tahajjah. And we, we, we doing all of these things to keep shaitan away. He can't do nothing with us, but we got to be encouraged with our wonderful religion. And we have the best religion. They can't do nothing with Islam, dear believers. They can't do nothing with Islam. And we're proving it every day because I'm looking at the believers, the brothers. I can't see the sisters, but I, I know they're down there. I'm looking at the obedience. Because when Allah says in the Quran and shut off the business and traffic is trade, if it's best for you, if you but knew. Your obedience to your creator is more important than anything. So may Allah bless our wonderful community. He keep us together. And we really, we, I ask, sincerely ask that we continue to love each other and just stop whatever fitness that it may be. I ain't hear about nothing, but I just know it, be, it could be the cause to it, to dividing us. And we just need to stay together because Allah loves us and, he, and we're stronger together, dear believers. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatin wa fi akirati hasanatin wa kina thabinar. Oh Allah, give us the good and excellence in this life, the excellence in the hereafter and defend us from what burdens our soul. 
which is the hellfire, the karma to Salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, Hayya la sara, hayya la rafala, Kote kamati sala, Kote kamati sala, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters, check your cell phones and make sure they're off. This is Khan. Allah Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasna'i Mahdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina Ramta Alayhim Ghayru Al-Maghdubi Alayhim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة وروه في حاب إثن ربهم من كل عام سلام هي حط من الفجر Allahu Akbar. Sami Allah Riman Hamida. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin. Iyakin na'abudu wa iyakin asna'i mahdina sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-lazina ramta alayhim ghayru al-mahdubi alayhim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal asr. Inna insana la fi kusr. Illa alladhina amanu wa amilu as-salihati wa tawassal bil haqqi wa tawassal bil sabr. Allahu Akbar. Semi Allah, Uliman Hamida. Allah, Akbar. Allah, Akbar. 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah